This is Amy Marigold with Mindful Art Studio, and I want to welcome you to using handmade envelopes in your art journal. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I just want to let you know that on the top right hand of your screen, you should see like a little white grid. If you hit that box, you can hit the Q&A so that you can put in your questions. I'd love for you to um, let me know who you are and where you're from. So pop into that box when, when you hop in here. Um, so I wanna let you know what we'll be doing today. Um, we're gonna be looking at um, some ways to use envelopes in your art journal, as I said. So um, we'll be looking at how to fold a basic envelope, um, different ways of attaching it together, both with glue and sewing by hand, or you could use also a sewing machine. We'll talk about some different ways to then attach it um, to the page and ideas for Kind of theme wise what to do with your with your um, envelopes and um, at the end I'll talk about um, I'll share with you a link for a special page I've created so that you can keep going with this at home um, it's got a bunch of really great resources and ideas so I'm excited to share that with you and I'll be sharing with you about a really great class that um, I've been invited to be a part of. It's actually an ebook. Um, you may be aware of it, 21 Secrets. Um, I think this is the seventh season. And um, this time it's called Tools and Techniques. So I'm one of 21 teachers and chapters in that book. So um, what we're doing is really connected in with that. <clears throat> this is a, a page spread from one of my um, lessons in my chapter. Um, on uh, adding mystery and wonder using doors, uh, flaps, and windows. So uh, what we're doing with the envelopes today is sort of an extension of that and a nice little taste for you. Um, so you can sort of check it out, but you can see I've got um, some flaps and some movable bits on my page here. So just to sort of get you um, thinking about some ideas. All right, cool. So um, like I said, if you're just popping in, um, if you click the little grid on the top right hand of your screen, you can hit the Q&A uh, so that you can drop in and let me know who you are. And if you have any questions, um, be happy to take them at any time. Okay, so, so let's start. So for basic envelopes, um, now I have a page that I've done my own personal stamp with. Um, you're basically going to fold it as though you were folding a letter to start. And this is the basic fold we're going to use for all of our envelopes, and then we can kind of customize it depending on the size and shape of the page um, and any little alterations that we make to make it different. So you're going to fold up a third of the way like you were folding a letter, and then a third of the way down. So you can see there's a little lip between these two parts, okay? Then from there, um, open it back up and you're going to want to fold the sides so that it's going to, the envelope can hold in whatever it is that you're trying to hold. So fold in that side, and then in the same way, fold in the other side. Um, and with, as with everything else that I do, I personally don't get too worried about being 100% exact with stuff. Um, you guys know that. Uh, you know, you certainly can. Um, and now I'm gonna fold it back up and down, right? And you can see how now we just have a very, very, very basic envelope. It's still unglued, but um, there's your basic envelope. Now from here, you can customize it a little bit more by, for instance, folding in a triangle, like with a sort of regular business size envelope. So you would fold in one side flap and the other side flap, okay, like that. And now it looks like sort of a general business type envelope, okay? So now if you're going to glue this into your journal, you'd obviously most likely, unless you're doing something creative that I didn't think of, you're gonna glue in this side onto your page. So now, um, if you wanna go ahead and do that, you would apply glue all to this part and to these parts. So let's do that now. So I'm using matte gel for my adhesive. 
Um, it's a great adhesive if you don't know already because um, it's archival quality, it won't yellow, um, it stays nice and sticky. You'll want to use a brush for it. Um, I dry my brush off. I keep it in water so that the gel medium doesn't kill the brush, but I dry it off. Um, hey guys, as you join, um, go ahead and hit that Q&A box by hitting the white grid, and then just drop in and let me know who you are, if you don't mind. I love to um, know who's, who's with me and where you're from. Okay, so you just brush on the gel medium on the bottom on that flap, and then we'll brush it in on this side. Right there. And um, I'm excited about the page that I created for you guys. Um, I've got a bunch of art journaling prompts and supply list and some printable PDF, so make sure you hang out till the end so that you get that link. Um, okay, so I've glued both those sides that are gonna help hold everything together. Now I'm gonna glue the two top flaps. Um, hey, Tracy from Georgia, thanks so much for dropping in. I really appreciate it. Um, it's great to know who's with me. It makes me feel like I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> so thank you so much, and please do let me know um, if you guys have questions. Um, and what you're hoping to get out of today, because um, that helps me be the most helpful possible. All right, so now I'm gluing that side, and now this side. And I'm just kind of giving a nice, even coating. Doesn't need to be super thick, but um, you know, you want enough on there so that it kind of stays. And hi, Vicki from, um, Hereford, I hope I'm saying that right, in the UK. Thanks for dropping in. Um, thanks, guys. It's awesome of you to drop in and say hi. I really appreciate that. Um, so now we're going to glue up the bottom flap. So now I just apply, this is the part where you just want to pay attention. It's not complicated, but apply glue on your little side there so that you're not gluing your envelope shut, <laughs> unless that's what you want for some reason. So then you know... And there goes my brush back in the water, right? So I don't kill the brush. And I'm going to cover up my matte medium too so that that doesn't go dry. But now you know um, that, sorry, there we go. Now you know that um, this is your opening and how wide your opening is. So you know um, what you can fit in there. Okay. So now if you're going to glue this into your book, you would obviously just apply your adhesive all along here. So again, with a gel medium, just give a nice, even coat. You don't need to make it super thick, but you want it to put on enough so that it really grabs on and stays. Um, you know, you may want to press a little bit just to kind of make sure it's really on there. You know, I will check for little kind of openings and things like that, just like throwing a dab of glue there just so I'm sure it's really kind of as secure as I want it to be. So there's your basic envelope. So now you can see how if you used an eight and a half, 11 by eight and a half by 11 sheet for something like this, you could totally send this through the mail. And yes, you can, at least in the US, I have often sent mail and envelopes just like this. I pop on my stamp. Um, I make sure that my address is nice and visible, whether I kind of do it creatively and fit it in like a little smaller, more likely with an envelope like this where the pattern is pretty strong, I would probably put in some sort of, um, I'd probably put in a little coat of gesso or white paint right here, um, or black paint or brown paint, and then go over it with a white gel pen. Um, I really like the Sakura Jelly Roll pens. They're awesome. Um, and I've got a link for that under the supplies page that I'm gonna share with you at the end. Uh, so that's kind of the basic starting point. Now, we can take that basic starting point, obviously, and um, move it in all sorts of directions. So here's um, the envelope that I've made and connected onto my page. Now this was a page that I had just done some doodling on. Um, I've got sewing on the page behind it and I had done some doodling while I was at um, a, a conference actually. It's hard for me to pay attention unless I'm doing something. I don't know if you guys have that. Um, but in any case, so, um, you know, when I was looking for a page, I just kind of did my envelope. I've got some liquid acrylics on here that I applied with a credit card. And um, 
then on the top, I've got some tape transfers that I've glued on. And if um, you're not familiar with that, and you're curious on my YouTube channel, you'll find another um, uh, webinar workshop just like this one um, showing you how to do that. Uh, but that's a fun process for collage. And then inside, I've got another little um, book that I sewed. It's a little mini book that I just started. There's nothing else inside yet except for the cover. And so you can see how there's one option for holding something inside um, of your little envelope. Um, so that's one option. So now you can take other sizes. I want to show you some other samples of other um, envelopes. So now here's some orange paper that I had. Um, this is some really nice paper, I think from paper source that I'd gotten in some sort of packet that I didn't use the whole thing. Um, but you can see how I've done this very, very simple little pattern just with dashes. Um, and for folks who feel like, oh, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at art, you can do dashes. Of course you can. Um, and, you know, feel free to copy stuff. You can, you know, it's, um, do like artist, um, Aug what's his name? August? I forget. Cleon, who does um, Steal Like an Artist. Um, you know, steal like an artist, do it. You know, you're going to make it your own. It's going to be your own thing. So anyway, I used sort of the basic same um, principle of, you know, that folding it up about a third and folding down about a third and folding in the sides. And you can see I've attached the sides in the back on this one. And I'll show you that in a minute um, when we do the two-sided bubblegum um, envelope. And I'll show you what that is. Um, so now here is one um, envelope where, uh, can you guys tell what this is? Um, so this is a palette. Um, sometimes I used a regular um, reusable palette, but sometimes I use just parchment paper um, because I really like parchment paper. It's got an extremely beautiful quality to it, and especially for the envelopes. Um, you can see how you can kind of see through it, and that makes for some really interesting um, options with the art journaling. See, now here I've just got some scraps that kind of go nicely together, and so it's sort of like a assemblage in a way. Um, but you can see I've taken this to the sewing machine, and you can see how lovely and simple that is um, to use. So. That's an option if you want something that's going to be sort of see-through, right? Like, so you want to be thinking about what kind of quality do you want it to have on your page? Like, something like this could be interesting if you've got some sort of a message that you want to send, whether it's just a word or a phrase, to use a see-through envelope so that you're starting to reveal something about that, but maybe not totally. Um, you know, or you're giving your viewer kind of a hint or a clue about what's coming. And obviously you can use this with all sizes of envelopes. You know, your envelope might be really, really tiny on your page or it may take up, you know, the entire page practically, right? And it can be sort of a lengthwise envelope like this one or it can be more um, going vertically like this one. So you've got a lot of options. Um, similarly, I'm gonna show you um, Going back to the sewing, so now I have, I have, as I think you can see, I've done this on the machine. Um, so it's pretty amazing if you haven't, and for folks who have played with this, you know how great it is. But if you haven't, um, you know, your sewing machine will sew through paper. And that just gives you a ton of other tools and options to be able to use in your art journaling and in your paper art generally. So um, I love sewing on paper. I use it all the time. So you can see I've sewn my seams, but I've also sewn just some interesting patterns on the top there so that it gives this whole other uh, texture and tactile element and um, element of interest. And, um, you know, I've got uh, my paint on the parchment paper that's kind of semi flaking off in a few spots, but it's really thick in others. So it's, it's really, it's a dynamic piece. It's really interesting. I mean, so this one really would be one that, you know, when I attach it, I might want to think about some different options. Like, um, let me see here. Uh, by the way, uh, I just started using these colorful binder clips and they are just so fun. 
Um, I don't know if you guys use those ever, but um, currently I'm journaling in these tan page journals most of the time because I love the tan pages. The downside is that they don't lay flat, um, but uh, I love the tan pages so much. It just starts you out on such a great surface. I feel like it's a lot less threatening than a white page. Um, and it just does interesting things artistically. So I like, it. so for instance, like I was thinking about this page, here's a background I've prepared already. Um, and you know, I'll keep backgrounds like this so that I've got kind of elements ready to go. Sometimes people will ask like, you know, when I'm not in the mood for art, what do I do? Sometimes when I feel like that, I'll just prepare a bunch of backgrounds where I don't get too worried about it being beautiful or amazing. I just kind of slap down some color and that always then creates a starting point that I can come back to later. Um, and that's a great way to approach it. I mean, you might just do a messy background like this. You might do just stripes and something you don't have to think about too much with paint or gesso or whatever. But again, if you're on the tan pages, that's really nice because you've already kind of got a color to start with, so it kind of gives you a, a jumping, um, jumping off point. So um, with this envelope, you know, you could, like we were talking about, paste this back part directly onto the page. So now, you know, whatever your contents are right here, or, you know, you could also choose to attach it um, just by the very top so that somehow there's this, you know, other flap kind of action um, happening, an interactive element to it, or you could, um, for instance, tack it just there, um, if that's what you wish, or even here. So, you know, trying to really think a little bit out of the box about um, what you might like to do and what the options might be. Like, don't be limited by, you know, thinking too straight up and down. Um, so let's do, I'm going to show you now one with a circle. So I had, I am big on using things that are left over. Um, and actually, if you're just joining us, welcome. And um, there's a Q&A box. If you go to the little white grid at the top right of your screen, um, you'll see the I think it's blue Q&A. Um, hit that and drop in and tell me your name and where you're from and I can say hello. And if you have any questions at any time, just drop right in there. Um, so I'm big on reusing stuff. So actually I had these um, circle cutouts that I had used um, years ago for an event um, where I was decorating tables and I've kept them and I keep using them in my art because I mean, look at how gorgeous this paper is. I think this is a paper from Paper Source if I'm not wrong. Um, so I've been reusing these circles in a bunch of different ways. So I was excited when I tried the other day to do an envelope with it because I was, um, able to use the whole sheet. So taking the whole sheet, you're gonna use the exact same principle, right? So you're just gonna fold in the side a third, fold in the other side a third, fold up the top, and then fold up, uh, sorry, fold up the bottom, and then fold down the top, right? So then when you're done, you're gonna end up with something where then obviously you wanna glue those two side flaps and the bottom flap together, right? So you would just apply some glue. Um, I would put some here so that that attaches that part and then some all on this section here so that it adheres there so that you end up with that part as your opening. And by the way, these, um, could be with a stiffer paper, this would make a really great gift box. You know, sometimes you'll get nice jewelry or something like that in one of these. Um, that would be really lovely. And especially where with this one, um, I've attached a little bead. Um, I think that makes it really fun. It also um, somewhat holds the flap down. Um, you can crease the top knot more to encourage that to happen more. Um, but I think that's a really fun thing to do. Uh, if you're going to use it as sort of a, a gift envelope. But again, even if you're using it in your journal, um, well, that's an interesting color combo. So uh, yeah, and I, I personally don't mind having my journal being somewhat open. I think that's part of showing that it's handmade and um, worked by hand. I think there's something really, um, I don't know, I just, I love that quality that says this is done by hand and that's part of why I love working in art journals and doing book art so much. Um, so for me, um, you know, I wouldn't do a bead that big on every single page, but on one page, if that's what felt right, that's what I would do. 
Um, so that's an option with the circles, just to give you that sense on that one. And let's do what I was referring to before, the bubble gum. Um, so it's gonna, when we're done, look like this. Okay, so you can see how I have two-sided. I have one printed paper here, this is another hand-cut stamp, and one printed paper here. Um, and this one has the flat top, but then still a curved cut on the bottom. Um, hi, Amy, it's, oh, hi, Brianna. It's Brianna from orangespiralarts.com, welcome. Um, guys, definitely visit um, orangespiralarts.com. That's a really cool site. Um, thank you. Um, she says, I love your art journaling style. Thanks for doing this live video. Um, thank you, Brianne. I love that you dropped in to let me know that you're here and let everybody, buddy, everybody know about your site. Um, it's great to have folks here and um, would love to hear any questions or, or additions that you want to add as we're working along here. So thank you. Um, Okay, cool. So you're going to take um, what I did for this. Again, you guys know, I think that I'm not into being super exact necessarily. So um, I just took my pages and um, uh, folded them into fourths and then cut them. I think this one I cut a little bit more because there was a little too much white for my taste. And so they're not exact in the way that they match. Um, but I would put um, kind of the two printed sides out like that. So you have a printed side and a printed side. And then from there, you're just gonna fold, let me get this off to the side here. You're just gonna fold the same way. You go about a third of the way up on the bottom. So then you have this, and then you go about a third of the way down at the top, just like you were folding a letter. And then make a nice, you know, kind of sharp crease like that. Then you open it back up like we talked about before. And then you're gonna fold in your sides. And obviously this gets slightly um, more and more, I don't wanna say difficult, but um, you know, it gets a little bit more challenging as you start folding smaller um, things. I remember, um, I may have talked about this in other workshops and webinars, but I had a friend, um, in middle school. So now I've got both of my sides folded in. I had a friend in middle school whose mom used to make these earrings out of ribbons. Um, so it would be in a re regular earring hook and then there was this teeny tiny little bow and I would just marvel at how she could get her fingers to tie out those little tiny bows. It was amazing. Um, um, Vicki R is asking, um, hi Vicki. Vicki's asking if I have any books out with my art. I do. I have um, an ebook online. Um, it's called Starting Your Art Journal. And um, I'll pop the link in at the very end. And also, when, um, when you go to the resources page I'm going to share with you at the end, it's going to be in the sidebar there, too. So I'll share it in both places. And if for any reason I forget, please remind me. Um, but the Starting Your Art Journal is um, kind of my really economic um, resource for starting an art journal. It's kind of like the, the be all end all um, in terms of just getting yourself started with resources and prompts and techniques for painting and drawing and some writing. Um, and if you prefer to do more of a video style, I've got an intuitive art journaling um, course and I can share that link um, too. Um, but what I'm uh, just came out with was um, part of the 21 Secrets um, ebook that's just come out. And that's a really great option because you'll get not just my chapter, but you'll get 20 other chapters. Um, it comes out April 1st. And um, anyway, I'll tell you more at the end. But that's a really great option, too, because you get so much all in one book. And it's an ebook, but you get a bunch of different pictures and tutorials and printables and video instruction, lots and lots of video instruction with some really amazing teachers. So I'll share more about that at the end. Thank you, Vicki. All right, so we're gonna fold up. And then again, same thing, we'll fold back down. Um, now, to start to customize these, right, and get some different kind of um, effects, I like to, um, again, I'm kind of loosey goosey into the eyeball stuff. Um, you may be a lot uh, more exact and precise than I 
tend to be. And so you may not want to eyeball this, but um, you know, I like getting kind of this, you know, curvy option here. So um, you can either draw, sorry, you can either draw here um, and then cut, or you can just eyeball it <laughs> like I do. Um, you know, so I'm just going to eyeball from going to this corner to this corner in kind of a smile. Um, so you just kind of cut and keep your eye on where you're going or you can trace it for something more exact. Now I'm not going to be super exact on this because I'm doing this on here, but you can see that's good. Um, and now you can do the same to get this curved top. You can do the same on the top, kind of going the other way. Let's see if I can manage this while I'm feeling like everybody's watching me. Ha ha. Um, there. Okay. All right. So you see how we have that top, right? All right. Now we want to make it, um, hi Shelly. Um, we have Shelly on. Thank you for saying hello. Shelly is, um, in my, um, creative self care group on Facebook and is a regular and an amazing, amazing artist. So it's fun to have her here. So it's nice to have someone here that, um, that I know well. Um, so thank you for saying hi. I really appreciate that. That's really nice of you. All right, so now we're going to cut here and here because we want to get rid of this flap right here, okay? Um, because when we fold it up, we're just getting it out of the way. It's not um, a big deal, but we're just getting some of that extra material out of the way so that when we fold this over and fold the bottom flap, this bottom flap here over the back, it's just not um, creating extra bulk that we don't need. So you make those two little cuts and then you'll just go ahead and cut this side right here. Okay, so that it looks like that. Um, and then you just do the same thing, obviously, on the other side. Um, and Shelly's dropping in again. Um, <laughs> Shelly's being very, very kind to me. And um, she says, hi, let me first say Amy's ebook is phenomenal, but more importantly, any video or blog she does is phenomenal. I would advise anyone and everyone to go on her resource link and get to know her. Fabulous. Oh, you're so sweet, Shelly. Thank you. That was really nice of you. Um, that's part of what I love about doing this whole online thing is that I get to meet people that um, live in different parts of the country and different parts of the world. And for sure, I would never have met otherwise. And, um, you know, you'd think that um, because the web can be sort of impersonal and distant and everything, which it can be sometimes, but um, depending on how we use it, it can also be really amazing and connecting. And I think when you know, we're artists or we're budding artists or we wish we're an artist and we're trying to meet other people. Um, when you can't quite figure out how to find those resources in your local community, being connected to people on groups like Creative Self Care or the one for 21 Secrets or the one for, you know, whatever artists you like and follow or whatever it may be, it can just be such a great way to connect people up. Um, and I know, um, you know, I'm on a bunch of different art journaling uh, groups on Facebook, and it's just so satisfying to share my work and see what people react to. And, um, you know, and I, I certainly value my in-person friends, um, artist friends tremendously, but it's so nice to also kind of connect with other people and see their work and be blown away and inspired. And, um, you know, definitely I get a ton of inspiration that way. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, Take this bottom flap and fold it back up just like we had it and then we have our two flaps sticking out back here if you can see that they're kind of tiny and then you'll just fold it in and in and then you'll glue those and you just apply your glue here and here and then um you'll see see how it looks like a bubblegum pack you guys see that um or just to me anyway um and then you can either keep these flaps or you can cut them off. Um, with the ones I've been making, I've been kind of keeping them on, but it's totally up to you aesthetically whether you like them or don't like them. Um, so you can either take them off or not. 
So that's the bubblegum one. If that one feels like slightly complicated, the resource sheet that I've shared with you, I made a really cool handy dandy grid with the pictures like one to whatever the numbers are that, <laughs> to help you guide you through the whole thing. So you don't have to like replay this video to make sure you've got it. If something was like slightly unclear or hard to tell on here. Um, okay, cool. Let me just check in with my sheet and see where we are. Um, yeah, so let's look at, um, I wanted to just say too, you know, you can use some of the sewing on one of these envelopes too, right? So like if I was gonna, um, nothing like uh, licking your string while you're on a webinar. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, you know, nothing super complicated here, um, but you can sew through paper by hand also, right? So I just kind of get my needle through there. I've got my little knot and I just start stitching. Um, and it'll go through several layers, right? Like I've got, what is that, four layers here? And it will go through, you gotta push a little bit, um, but it will go through. And again, I really like, you know, there are times I like hand-sewn items and there are times that I like machine-sewn items. And it kind of just depends what kind of quality I'm looking for in, in the work. Hey, if you guys are just dropping in, um, there should be, or there is, uh, a little white grid on the top right of your screen. If you hit that, you'll see a and a for question and answer box. You can hit that, type in um, your name and where you're from, let us know who you are and where you're coming from. And if you have questions, just pop them right in there. Um, all right, so now there's a little bit of hand sewing. Let's see if I can get you to see that right there. And that would be really fun. And of course, you could sew that directly into your page right, you would just also go through the page or not. Um, you know, as a reminder, you wanna be thoughtful about what's behind it. Now this is a finished piece that I really like, so I'm not gonna sew through this page. I would paste onto this page when I attach um, an envelope here. So cool, all right, so those were options on how to attach. Let's talk about what might go inside. Um, this is the super fun part, so right, like, I mean, let's think about envelopes for a minute, right? So envelopes, especially now, I feel like have such an interesting meaning for us in our culture, right? We're getting so technologically advanced, you know, things happen by email and text and, you know, the written page, and I think this is part of why art journals are so powerful is that, you know, our hand touched, hand written um, material is getting more and more rare, which is so, weird to think about, um, but it makes cards and letters and anything handwritten so much more precious. Um, I was just watching another art journalist um, video um, on one of these Facebook groups the other day. Um, and she, I think it's Ivy Newport. I'm sorry if I'm not getting that right, but she's one of the teachers I believe on um, 21 Secrets that I'm gonna tell you about that I'm a part of. Um, but in any case, uh, she had bought on Etsy a ledger, like, a, you know, when people kept the books on paper um, and their handwriting was very beautiful. And so she's doing her art journaling on that. Um, and that was really cool. So, um, so anyway, I think that there's something special about envelopes um, because of what they can hold. And, oh well, yeah, I almost forgot. So one of the things that got me initially interested in this whole technique was this series of books called Griffin and Sabine. Now this is not an art journal in the strict sense because it's a published book, but um, if you're familiar with this, you know how amazing it is. And if you're not, you're in for a treat. Um, it's a really wonderful story. It's a love story. It's kind of mysterious and a little bit m magical. Um, I won't spend time telling you about that, but like, look what an amazing experience this is. So, you know, he's used postcards, on one side that are printed into the page that's not sticking out. And then he does art on envelopes and it's an actual envelope. And this is a published book, like this was so amazing to me. And then there are, you know, actual letters that were printed and then put in. Isn't that amazing? So um, that was what kind of got me going about, wow, you know, there's a lot that, you know, 
in art journals that you could do with envelopes. And so, you know, ideas, right? And again, this is on the resource page, so don't feel like you need to take notes if you don't want to, but, um, you know, you could use certainly something like that um, to do a story between two characters. You could use it to um, hold a letter that perhaps you're never going to send to somebody, right? Like those things that you want to say to someone either that you can't talk to or you can't say those things to. And so it lives inside of this envelope in your journal. Um, you know, how powerful would that be? Or even more powerful than you take the Griffin and Sabine idea and you know, on one page, you've got your letter to that person. And then on the other page, you've got your imagined response to you. Um, you know, and maybe they say the things that you wish they would say or had said. Uh, and how powerful would that be? And how magical would that be? Um, you know, and you can also use the um, pieces like we were talking about before to hold art. Um, this is my fish, Herbie. <laughs> Herbie's a stamp I um, carved out of um, like one of those stamp carving blocks and again my resource page has information if you're interested in stamp carving. I've got um, links for some tutorials on stamp carving because uh, I really love stamp carving and um, always interested in sharing that information because stamps can be so expensive and they're so much fun when you make your own. Um, so here's my little guy, Herbie, my fishy guy, um, and he's fun to let him jump around into different things in my art journal. So um, today he's hopping right in there. Um, so he's kind of going diving for something. And you can see how playful you could get with this. Like, um, let's say that the um, envelope maybe had some sort of food on it or something. You know, you could have your animal or your fish diving for some sort of food. Um, you could have a balloon that, you know, kind of floats out as it gets picked up, or perhaps um, one of the ideas that I shared on the resource page was um, one time I had cut out a little magazine picture of a boy, very, very in detail, so that it was exact. It was, you know, all around his clothes, like every single detail I spent a long time. And so, and he was jumping, so it looked like he was jumping out of the envelope. Um, so how fun. All right. Um, you know, and as we talked about, you know, you could do things like this. You could have um, playful things like little messages on tons and tons and tons of little um, tiny bits of paper. Um, you know, you could do it like magnetic poetry style where you've got a bunch of little bits of paper with words and then you take them out and it becomes this interactive thing where you rearrange it um, and make a poem and then you could share those poems on other pages rewritten. Um, and it's almost like a game. And um, let me see, I had one other idea I wanted to share with you. Oh, I often cut out um, bits from kind of, you know, watercolors or drawings that just don't quite work. Um, and I'll cut bits out of them like circles or I'll hole punch circles or squares or whatever it might be. And then those are great things to then put into uh, an envelope, right? And so then you get this nice little surprise. And then something like this might just stay as an art piece. It might get a little message on it. Um, you can share messages in your envelopes, quotes, poems, songs. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, flexibility in, in what you can do. So let me see. Um, and again, you guys, if you have questions, please pop into the Q&A box. There's a white grid on the top right. Um, if you hit that, then you can type in your question and I'll get it and I'll answer it for you. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about, I got to get my boxes to pop up here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, 21 Secrets um, and that should be popping up now. Yep. Um, so it looks like you guys can see that now. So like I had started to say a little bit before, 21 Secrets, it's a 150 page downloadable ebook. Um, and as you might intuit, there's 21 different teachers. Um, and I was really um, quite uh, honored to be included because there's some really amazing artists included this year, like um, some people that you might in fact know, like um, Dinah Wakely, for instance, and Connie Solera, who's the, um, uh, who owns 21 Secrets, um, is also doing something um, called Moody um, with working with charcoal and kind of looking at um, 
themes of light and dark, but this year is very, very kind of practically oriented. Um, there's a teacher who's doing lettering in an alphabet. Um, somebody else is doing um, kind of working with particular types of um, materials for faces. And my chapter is all looking at how to use um, kind of what I call dynamic elements in your art journal. So um, things like flaps, um, the envelopes is not included. That was something that I wanted to share with you guys today. So that's um, separate. It's not going to be a repeat for you. Um, and uh, God, I had so much fun <laughs> figuring out um, some fun ways to get um, kind of playing even more because I was teaching the course, playing even more with getting some things to move around. I love this little lady spinning. Um, and you can see um, I've got like a nice little couple of beads on there um, onto the page and a flap, and this is a great place to kind of do some more things with. And I talk much more in depth about how to um, how to use them and incorporate them, but that's kind of a little taste, and I won't um, ruin anything and show you the pages that um, I'm doing in the course, but that kind of gives you an idea. Let me just pop back to Q&A. Actually, wait, I'm also gonna show you guys um, my resources page that I've been talking about. So that should be showing now. Um, and let me go back to Q&A in case you guys have questions. Um, okay, select. So Tracy is asking, if I were to use some leftover gift wrap paper to make an envelope, would the gel make it all rumply? Um, excellent question. I'm not entirely sure if I know the answer. Um, I can tell you that with the um, really thin parchment paper, there is a wrinkly effect. So it is possible with a very thin paper, um, as gift wrap sometimes can be. Now, sometimes gift wrap is really thick, in which case I don't think it would rumple. But in any case, um, as you're probably intuiting, your best bet is probably just take a very small bit and test and see if you'll get crumple look or not. And if you do get crumple look, I guess my other thought is play around with it and make it work for you, right? So make it all crumply so that that's part of the the aesthetic and see if you can find a way to use it so that um, you like it. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, so and 21 Secrets comes out on April 1st. Um, so you can buy now. It's, um, I think I mentioned it's $98 and you get the 21 different chapters. Um, and then once you, um, once it releases on April 1st, you'll get all those chapters at the same time. Um, it's just really great because you can kind of go through and decide which chapters you want to do first. Um, you own it forever and you can always refer back to it. And for those of you who tend to buy courses and then never use them, <laughs> because that happens to a lot of us where we kind of get really excited and then, um, end up not using it, then, um, there's a great chapter, and I apologize, I can't remember which artist it is, but there's a great chapter about how to get yourself to actually use stuff. So if you're one of those people, start with that chapter. <laughs> um, and I think that um, it's gonna help guide you through so that you stay consistent and figure out a plan that works for you. Because of course, everyone's different, right? For me, it may work to set up an artist date with a friend of mine, and we get together to, for instance, watch the video together and do that chapter together. For somebody else, it might make sense to, um, what you call it? Um, it might make sense to put things down in my calendar and make sure I do it. It might make sense to dedicate, say, a really small amount of time every day, like five minutes, towards just doing a couple of little steps, even towards making art. Like, you know, okay, day one, I'm taking out my supplies um, for the paper ephemera. Day two, I've taken out, <laughs> you know, my pens and stuff, or maybe I need to organize my studio a little bit or I'm overwhelmed by all my supplies so I'm just going to grab like a little basket and put just a couple of things in it like my watercolor paints my brush my you know cup and a paper towel and then I'm set to go the next day and there's less of an excuse in the way but there's going to be a lot of really great um techniques for you in that chapter. And I'm just really excited about it. I mean, as I looked through all the photos that were being shared and the videos, 
Um, I haven't had a chance to do all of them yet, but the ones that I've looked through have already given me tons of ideas and I've been experimenting. So um, I'm hoping that you guys all find 21 secrets. Um, and quite frankly, it's more than 21. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of secrets for you. Um, so I hope you check it out and definitely check out um, my resources page that I've shared because um, I've given you more than I've even talked about, tons of prompts. I've got the um, grid with the pictures for the um, for the bubblegum envelope uh, for you. Uh, there's a materials list with links so that it's um, kind of easy if there's things that you don't have that you're looking for. Um, and in fact, I've also shared, if you're interested in these um, this painting style, there's liquid acrylics on the list. So that's the high flow liquid acrylics. If you're seeing that, you're not sure what it is. I love those, they're my new, most favorite toy. Um, and really, I, I just hope that um, you've enjoyed this and find play. Um, and we've got a comment from Brianna. Um, Brianna says, I love 21 Secrets workshops. I've purchased nearly every ebook. Oh my God, that's awesome. The ride is awesome and the workshops are excellent. Support Amy, be sure to register through her link. Oh, thank you, Brianna. That was really nice of you. Um, and um, cool to know that you've you know found it useful every single time. I mean, to me, it's just amazing that for $98, you get um, just such a huge breadth of approaches and information. And um, so that's really tremendous. So I just wanna say, um, I know that it's always, you know, you sign up for these things, but when you actually commit and come, um, I really appreciate it because I put so much into wanting to offer these resources to you. And I'm hoping that um, you've gotten some good ideas and inspiration for, you know, all your different um, envelope uses. And again, when you go to the resource page, I think you'll find even more inspiration ideas and ideas so that when, um, you're at home and you're like, oh yeah, what was that idea <laughs> that I had? Um, you can go ahead and try it. So um, definitely pop by um, the site and also let me know how it's going and um, if there's other webinars that you'd like to see. Um, this is an Artful Friday uh, workshop and webinar and um, I'll definitely be coming back within the next month or maybe six weeks and doing another. So if there's topics you'd like to see, please, please, please let me know and um, I'll try my best to do them. So um, again, it's Amy Maracle from mindfulartstudio.com and thank you so much for joining me for using handmade envelopes in your journal. And I hope you have a great and art-filled weekend.